the sensor right there. That's the interior air temperature sensor. It's also called an aspirator. Um, the sensor's back behind it above the headliner. Okay, one of the first things you have to do is take this little grill off. And you want to use some sort of plastic tool, fairly clean. Well, actually really clean so you don't scuff up the, the headliner. And then you work it in. And you pop this screen off. And that's what you get. If you get real, let's see if we can get that. So if you get real aggressive with it, you can break those prongs off. So you really don't want to do that because this part probably won't be available anymore in a very short amount of time. But that's the screen off or filter or whatever you want to call it. It's not a filter. I don't know why I even said that. You're going to want to take the screws out to hold the sun visor in. Thankfully this truck doesn't have it, but if you had a lighted vanity mirror on your um, your sun visor, you'd also have to disconnect the wiring. And as you can see, I've pulled this panel loose so I can get this whole corner loosened up, hopefully. Well, maybe not. Oh no, the sons of bitches with the windshield have glued the front edge in place. Oh my lord. In order to change this inside temperature sensor, I had to remove a fair amount of stuff. Pulled the weather stripping down. Pulled this panel down. There's some Velcro that holds it in place right there. Another little bit of Velcro back here, or, or no, it's a push-in clip. And then we have these clips that hold around this um, door striker. And all this snaps back up and will stay. Also had to pull this off and had to pull the sun visor off and that gave me just enough room to feed my hand up in there and get everything pulled out. It's a little bit tight and um, you do stand a chance of cracking this. You see mo most of the people that do it online, they got a tore up edge on this and, and I really don't want that so because it's my truck. But this will all go back up in there just fine and be covered up and look just like brand new and i'm really hoping this helps out the fellow that's having trouble with his because somebody changed out the headliner and there's no wiring so he's kind of in in a bad shape on that but this will let him know where everything goes and i'm going to point it out one more time after i get this back together which way it goes something else i had to do i had to um take the pins loose and drop this rear pull handle loose from the ceiling basically all you got to do is get a screwdriver up underneath the lip and pull it out and there's a little slot on this one that you go in you pull that one out too once they're out it's down you just heard me push it back up in there and you push it back up in there and lock it and we'll do the same thing over here just went in Just went in and it's done. That's kind of interesting. You know, in all the years I've worked on these cars or trucks, I don't think I've ever had to pull one out like that. And I've been riding around with it for 20 years. But anyways, this one here, just a little screwdriver. Goes in under the edge, pulls it out a little bit. And this one right here, a little screwdriver goes in that slot, pulls it out a little bit. Then you can come on the top side and keep pulling it further out. And that drops that handle out and lets the headliner come down even further. Well, here I am about to slide this thing out of the hole. It is a kind of a pain in the rear you got to work with. Um, picks and such to get in there and, and lift this tab to be able to get the wires pulled loose. Tight working, but it ain't that bad. I took this thing apart. And I was expecting to find a loose bushing in this motor, 
but it feels perfectly snug so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, take it inside hook, hook some air up to it and blow it out and get it cleaned out and I might just this thing might have had something that's making just a little bit out of balance and making a noise I'm going to clean it all out good and then plug it back up and see what it does well it may sound crazy but I cleaned it all out and it seems to be quiet Let's get it, see if we can get some light on this thing. Yeah, I cleaned it all out and it seems to be quiet. It's turning smooth. I think I might just put it back together. I, I got the light focused just right. I guess the um, a slight flickering in the LED in my flashlight is making, and combined with the camera speed, is making that thing look like it's stuttering, but it's, it's definitely not when you look at it and with your naked eye, it's spinning just as smooth as can be and fast. I get, like I said, it has something to do with frame rates and the flickering from the light. You can see if I take the light away, it seems to smooth out some, even though you can just barely see it. It's a combination of the two. Let's see now. There we go. That's kind of cool. The other thing that may have happened too is see those pegs? They fit in holes in the back of this sensor housing. They could have backed off a little bit and been caught between that and the dust been causing a vibration that sounded like a knocking when there really wasn't. Let me just get it back together and see what it does again. Just want to give a good view, hopefully, of the wires. Can you see those colors? Eh, Trying to get some light focused in there. I don't want to add too much external light. I guess I'm going to have to, though. There's a green, white, a brown, and a black wire. Yeah, there you go. A green, white, black, and brown. Those are the wires that go to this sensor. We'll talk about where they connect in just a minute. I've never had a need to do this before, but I had a viewer ask about where the wires originate for the that sensor that we've been looking at. And this is the under dash relay junction block. And it's kind of hard to keep the light on it but the let me see if I can get this focused like this but this connector here is the one that has the wires in it for the, the sensor up there and it's part of this whole harness that goes to this plug and this plug and it comes up and goes back this way goes back this way loops across the hood release or brake release cable comes across this lower dash bracket hopefully you can still see that it goes across this this is the same harness and it goes up through here it crosses behind this one so it's this one right here and then follows up this way and it goes up the A-pillar and routes up through here into the headliner and then it eases down through here it's hard to see back up in there but it, it comes up crosses over comes this way these four wires drop off at this sensor and then a couple more wires continue back along this back edge. Don't know if we can see in there or not. There's a, a harness that keeps going back. And I guess it probably crosses over and goes to the dome light. Hmm. 
but you can see that harness right there where it turns and makes a right hand turn can't hardly see it but it goes about probably uh, probably about six or eight inches it, it travels about six or eight inches goes up this way and comes straight back and goes to this sensor and that's the way it's routed just want to give a good view hopefully of the wires can you see those colors and eh, try to get some light focused in there don't want to add too much external light I guess I'm gonna to have to though There's a green, white, a brown, and a black wire. Yeah, there you go. A green, white, black, and brown. Those are the wires that go to this sensor. We'll talk about where they connect in just a minute. And this is the way that that grill snaps in. Just want to give you an idea of what it looks like outside the vehicle. And it just tightens up with those little teeth in the slots. And that's what holds everything firmly in place. Let me see about getting this truck back together. Well, once again, trying to describe where... the sensor right there that's the interior air temperature sensor it's also called an aspirator um, the sensors back behind it above the headliner i showed just a little while ago I, or i was in there a little while ago took it out cleaned it put it back in because i didn't see anything particularly wrong with it other than it was dirty but with the sensor grill being right there the wires come up this way go down this channel come down and pretty much follow this curve and then they it cuts across once it cuts across it goes down this edge goes down the a pillar continues on down comes out behind the dash and it's that harness right there from there it curves, goes right across there, above the parking brake handle, and then terminates in those two plugs there, the white and the brown one right below it. The top one is the one that has the, let me get my finger off this thing the the top one the white one is the one that has the the important wires for the sensor up there and that's where the harness is hopefully this is going to help the fella